grew up uh, in Brooklyn. Everybody kind of had to help one another. And uh, we really bonded. It was a whole tribe of multiracial people. So after I was about 18 to 19 years old, there was, I didn't know really what racism was, but that, that, by that time it was too late to tell me anything different because my foundation, so I'm a unique African-American. There's no place to run to, boy. Lou Gossett Jr.'s storied career would begin in 1959, establishing a series of firsts. I became the first uh, African-American president of a junior high school and the first African-American president in high school. And before I graduated high school, I was on Broadway in this piece right here called Take a Giants. And uh, so that was my life. His first film role was in Bahamian Sidney Poitier's version of A Raisin in the Sun, the outflow of Gossett's deep connection with his African and Caribbean roots. Here we go again, a lecture on our African past, on our great West African heritage. So uh, that's the way it was. So I would have to step backwards. I joined Dr. King, but I had to step backwards in order to fight because I don't understand why people are fighting for equality when it's not, nobody's called but gods, that we should all be equal. So it was in my system. So I was sent home from Montgomery uh, because I didn't want a dog to fight me. I wanted to beat the dog up. Somebody want to hit me, I want to hit back. Looks like the twin issues of racism and civil rights were as far removed from Gossett's professional reality as Hollywood was from Birmingham. Those are roots, those are American roots. It was a case of art imitating life. After starring in Roots, Gossett would later come face to face with a shadow of the same racism depicted on screen. It could be another day. Eracism. Get the word racism, put an E in front of it. Erase racism, erase ism. There's so many isms fascism, uh, communism. All of that is man-made. So racism is more than black and white. It means a mentality where anybody or anything thinks that they're superior to another. It's not possible because of money, because of weapons, because of prestige. Nobody is more superior. We kind of need one another. And it seems like it's a redundant message on all philosophies and all things, whether it's a civilization like Napoleon's or the Romans or Hitler or the British Empire, or the old American thought process, whatever their empire was, whenever they got to a point where they thought that they were better than anybody else, they were destroyed. There is a way to stop the killing. I will find it if there's a path. I will lead the world to Allah. So I think the only way to stop that is by educating our children in those basic, back to basic situations. Respect for your elders, respect for your opposite sex, the reason why you're on the planet, your hygiene, your physical fitness, your spirituality, which normally would happen in a healthy neighborhood, in a healthy family, which most by and large doesn't exist. So from that time in Brooklyn, until to now, that probably made me an exception in success. So my success professionally, 58 years of successful work. Successful work that over the years demonstrated to the world Lou Gossett's versatility, depth, and scope. After receiving some of Hollywood's highest honors, Gossett faced the startling truth. He'd reached the glass ceiling. Commonly casted Hollywood roles had nothing more to offer him. The winner is Lou Gossett, Gossett Jr. It's kind of embarrassing to ask for permission with the established producers out there to do relevant stories about my history. So once I got my Oscars and my Emmys and all that stuff, I figured, well, now I can make a call. What do you want to do, Mr. Gossett? Well, I'd like to do the story of Kwame Nkrumah. I want to do the, 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 the successful sheriff, uh, the, the marshal, Marshal Bass Reeves, who's the most successful marshal in the West. Oh, I want to do the Buffalo Soldiers. Oh, I want to do Jomo Kenyatta. I want to do, I want to do. And I would say no. So I ended up doing I'm very grateful for the work, but I ended up playing second fiddle to people like Chuck Norris, who's a friend of mine, or Dennis Quaid, or James Woods, and none of them won Emmys and Oscars. So the imbalance still was there. It's, a, it's kind of a psychological change. But then I got the message. If you want to do these stories, do them yourself. 
What seemed a setback became an outlet for creative freedom and growth. Lou took matters into his own hands, producing the opportunities that Hollywood lacked. It was his time to tell the stories, his time to portray the characters that resonated in his soul. So uh, that's what I'm doing these days. I'm trying to uh, do these movies myself. I've got three of them coming out independently. And then the next level is called distribution. Now, if you want to get the stories and the messages for our people to uplift themselves and learn about themselves, you have to have your own private network. The vision is clear. Take the message to the masses and make a way out of no way. Lose commitment to integrate positive messages and life examples from our rich ancestry into global media can influence the very way we think, bringing unity to the Caribbean and African diaspora. The excitement of these new ministers in the, in the, in the Caribbean and in Central and South America and of course in Africa, when I mention that subject, their eyes get big as saucers. Because other networks say that we don't belong together. We definitely belong together, and our children need to see it. Because when they look at the largest contribution of radio and television, they psychologically don't think that they belong. And for them to feel full and equal, if not better than what they see on television, they create their own world. Their own world is the hip hop, gangbanger world. They belong there and it's taking over and it's and its influence is very strong around this globe. They need that mentorship that I told you about that I had with my neighborhood my family. They're brilliant but they need that bottom line mentorship. Hello, how y'all? For Lou Gossett Jr. it has all come full circle and now his life, career and ambition have aligned to open a new channel for positive mentorship. It is his goal to give light, direction and a powerful new perspective to the world. So this communication system is essential. I've come up with the fact that the positive influence of Afrocentricity in the Western Hemisphere, and I underline the word positive, is essential for the salvation of the Western Hemisphere.